All right, guys, welcome back. Um, this is Instructor Phil. So um, we already did the wood demo. Some of you guys are getting a little bit stuck. The purpose of this exercise is getting you used to what we call build up and bringing up different parts of a drawing because I already had a student ask me, Elizabeth, which was a great question, which is when do I do the bases? When do I do the shadows? When do I do the highs? That's the term that we call building up a, an image. I mean, there's everyone works differently, so you sort of do it at what feels good and in what pattern or time, okay? So, you know, what I thought I'd do is let's just get in here um, and I'll pick something and I'm gonna try to mimic it and then do our best. So I'm gonna try to do this stone feel right here, okay? Um, and real quick, I already noticed this, I thought I'd mention this. If some of you save the image and you grab it in like this, so watch, if I grab, um, I have a texture folder here. So let's say you grab this and you drag it and drop it and it lands. See, that's okay. And what it does though, is when you drag it inside, sometimes it brings it in as what's called an indexed image. Okay, which means it's not rasterized. That means right now, if I go to, I, I, I can color swab from it, but it's not a changed file. And it sometimes it reacts differently. So what, I, what you do is you right click on the image and you come up here and you just tell it to rasterize that layer. So if I come down, go to right there it says rasterize hit okay and boom okay it's a little bit easier because sometimes some of you will notice you'll grab something you'll bring it in like for example the brick wall was an index file so if I bring that in and drop it it comes in it's a little bit different it's okay to use you can still paint off of it but you have to right click on it and you have to tell it rasterize it's a little bit easier to grab you know in, into use so let me label this brick and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna label um, this one rock. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, then we're gonna start working on building one of these up here. Okay, so there, that's that one. And I'm gonna come over here, layer two. Uh-oh, did I get merged in there? No, it didn't. Rock, oh, there it is. I have it up high, so I'm gonna bring that down a little bit more and put it back down here. Okay. So first thing when you look at this, there's a base color, right? So let's come over here and add another layer in here. And remember we talked about using our color picker. So I look at this, I come up here, I bring up the color picker. I'm gonna start from the base and build up. So right now I notice this is a little bit harder. You might actually have to zoom into some of this and it gets a little pixelated, but you can see there are little white highlights on, on there, but there is a base gray which is more of like a mid gray in there, somewhere similar to about here. Okay, now you're not trying to, you're trying to copy the texture, but you could do your own version of it. So the cracks don't have to be perfect. That doesn't matter. It might not even look exactly like this. That doesn't matter. That's a jumping point for you. You have to learn how to use the tools, the selection tools and the brushes to get to that sort of level, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is I selected that base color I have this little box selected here, and what I'm gonna do is go to edit, and I'm gonna go to fill. Okay, let me zoom in here a little bit more. There, so you can see that. So if I go to edit, I'm gonna go to fill, foreground color. Now I felt it with that gray, okay? At the same time I did that, I'm also noticing it's a little bit lighter in some spots, right? So I'm gonna come over here and label my layers, just like I taught you guys, that's my base layer. I'm gonna come over, put a couple more layers up on top, I'm gonna call this mid, and then that might be mid one, this might be mid two, and then I come over here, I'm gonna put, that might be text for some textures, this might be some highs, okay? So then I come down here to my mids, all right? And I'm gonna to try to get some of this lighter feel and that scratchiness in there. So um, my last is still selected, I'm on mids, okay? See the ants right there? If it's not selected, you hit D. You want to select it exactly, you can go back down to the base layer, hit Command Alt V, and hit the arrows and it selects it. Okay? Or you could just make a selection on the layer. So I'm on the mid. So what I'm gonna do now is go into my brushes. And I have, if you're looking at this, I do have a couple like scratchy brushes here that do some different things. So real quick, in case you just want to try, I do like some of the natural brushes in Photoshop. So when my o window's open right here, I'm gonna scroll down here 
and I'm going to come down to natural brushes. See them? Two and one. I'm going to hit natural brushes. Now it's going to ask me, do I want to replace or append? Appenditure. It's an arm. Something added onto your body. Append. We want to add in right now. So I'm going to hit append. See what it did is it gave me these other textures right here. Okay, excuse me, these other brushes that have a di different texture feel. On top of that, let's just come back. That was natural brushes too. Let's add natural brushes and see what append there. So now it gave me some other brush options. Okay, so some of the brushes I gave you, they, they work really well, but sometimes it's nice to have something like this. This has this sort of grainy feel to it. If I make it large, you see what it looks like? So I could come in with this. And I could start trying to get some of these little areas of light and some of these white areas. So I might come in here. Now I'm gonna, when, what's the one thing I taught you guys about brushes? Whenever you get a new brush, try the brush at what and what? At zero and at 50 opacity. Because brushes work different ways. So if I come in right now at zero and I click around, I can see what it's doing. Okay, maybe that's not what I want. So let me command Z. Maybe I want to try it at 50 and see what it does. Oh, it's a little bit fainter. Okay, also the dots get larger. So maybe on this, I need to come over here. And I'm just going to sort of come in here, lightly go around. Just trying to build up. There. Yeah, these are just, this is, so if I, if I were to take this and paint with it, let's see what it looks like. See, it's scratchy, right? But I'm sort of building up some of these textures. So I'm going to build up with that. Now, I'm not going to go through and do it all the way down to the bottom to save myself time. I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to say duplicate layer. I'm going to hit V. And I just brought it down to the base like that. See that? Deselect. Okay, there. Actually, I might even take it, rotate it in the other direction. Boom. Okay, so for those layers, there. Now I have something there. So I'm just going to keep building up and trying to get this. Now that texture is going to be hard for me to get. Okay, It's going to take some time and some practice. I don't ex ex expect you guys to nail it the first time every time, but we keep doing the build up. You also notice I have some darks and lights in here, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is since I have this on another layer, I want to use that to my own advantage. What happens if I transform that? Excuse me. What happens if I duplicate that? It's on the layer above, right? And I'm going to move it, hit V, hit my arrows. I'm going to move it over a little bit. See how it got a little blurry? Like that. And I'm going to go to L, and I'm going to put a little bit more white in it in my levels. Remember we talked about some of our image adjustments? Ooh, look at what happened when I did that. See that graininess? It, it sort of got in there. It's sort of cool, right? Something a little bit different. OK. So let me see what happens if I go more to that now. But that's sort of cool. Look at those little black dots. See how that could be an advantage for me later? So I could make dots and go into levels. Remember, we talked about image and adjustments. We talked about like three to four different adjustment um, options at this point. Hue and saturation, which was control U. Control B, which was color balance. And then levels, which was command L. Okay. Um, all of those little options are going to allow me to get in here and make some of these little adjustments. Okay, so let's just say I do something about there, there. And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to rotate this into a different pattern. Let's see, that's pretty cool. Okay, let me turn this off. I did notice that I want a couple more little areas. I had some patch areas, oops, that weren't quite filled in there. So let me get some of that in there. I'll turn on the other layer. That's pretty cool, right? Because now I have some dark against some light. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to keep those. I'm going to commit to those. Now, I could merge those layers, right? But what happens if I merge them? Can I adjust them? No. Can't ever adjust them. So maybe I should just leave them right there. And what I want to do now is I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to call this some shadow. I noticed there are some darkened lights here. So I'm going to come over here on another layer. Select up in here. Okay, and I'm going to go to my brush and look around. I'm looking for a nice round sort of fuzzy brush and see if I can get some shadows. Now, one of the brushes I gave you is this one right here. This 200 works really nice. So I'm going to come over. I'm going to, I'm in brush mode. So remember I told you you can come over here and double click the color picker 
and I could go to a darker value by selecting like this, okay? Or another thing I could do is when I'm going to paint, if I hit Alt, you remember that? So when I'm in the brush mode itself, and if I hit Alt on the keyboard, it gives me the color picker so I don't have to go color pick directly on it. What I'm going to do is come along here, and I'm just going to sort of, I'm going to actually drop this under my base layer because I don't want it to affect part of the mids. And I'm going to come in here and sort of darken a couple of these corners, just like it is here on my texture. See those little gradient spots? So I'm darkening that, and it's not quite going as well. So I'm going to pick a little bit darker value there. Get a little darker here, a little on that side, like that. There we go. Okay? So that's sort of cool. It's bringing me a little bit closer to that realm of detail, right? Okay. Now, I think what I might do is to put your mind at ease. What if I go in there and I start making some cracks? Because the cracks are a huge part of keeping that drawing sort of constructed. And then I could go back up and build up on little highlights and little dark areas and so on. Okay. So let's do that. So what do I, let's before we go there to do the cracks, let's look at what I have. Okay. I have the base. I have a shadow. I have my textures. I have my shadow layer. And I have the base. Okay. So one thing you'll notice, I don't know if you guys notice this, but when I zoom in, I notice how big my dots are compared to how tiny the dots are there, right? That's going to be an issue because, now I could leave it, to me it's fine, but the dots there are really, really small, right? I could make my dots smaller. If I wanted to, I could do this. I could select these two layers and I could hit transform. And I could scale those dots down like that. Now, do you see how much more grainy that becomes? How much more similar it is to the current texture that's right next door? Okay, so if I got it up to about, let's say, about a quarter like that, I'm going to merge these layers. What happens if I were to duplicate that? And then bring that and sort of fit it right next to itself like that? See how that just blends in? It's pretty easy, right? I'm going to merge those two layers. All right, there it is. Let me move it over a little bit, get it fit. And then what I'm going to do is just select all, copy, and paste, or you could duplicate it. When you paste it, remember, it lands in the middle of your screen, so I'm going to bring it back down. Now, do you notice the difference? My dots are much more, oops, they're much more refined right now. That's pretty good like that, okay? So... They're getting a lot thinner into that other texture. So there's a difference there because I could even go back and show you the difference. Before, I had them enlarged. Oops, not that much. Sorry. Before, I had them enlarged about double the size about there. So if I go back and look, that's where I was before. See the difference? Now watch when I hit Command-Z, it'll bring me back. See how much tighter it is? being like that. So I like it a little bit tighter. Okay. So to me, that looks pretty cool right now. Um, if you have a little line like that and there's something you don't like, can I show you guys a new tool? It's pretty cool. It's called the stamp tool. Okay. How you get it is you hit S or if you come over here on your toolbox and you scroll down, it'll, it's right here. It's called clone stamp tool. Now, this is what this tool does, which is really, really cool. Okay, you see this little, it, it mimics my brush, but watch this. When I press Alt, look what I get. I get a bullseye. So if I tap right here, and then I bring my brush over here, see what my brush is doing? It's going to copy, it's going to stamp over and copy wherever I put that bullseye. Does that make sense? So... If I, let's say I wanted to see how there's a little bit of a line there from where I merged those textures. So what I can do is come over here, stamp right about there, and then I could come in. Whoa, see that? And I could blend little edges together. It, wherever I put this stamp, let's say I want to copy this exact line right there. I'm going to put it there. And if I come over here, see what it did? Because it's copying where I put the bullseye and it puts it over on another spot. That can be really helpful for me because it allows me to quickly blend in. 
like I could take part of a texture here and if I want to put that here can you see how I can see it in my brush and guess what the cool thing is about stamp up at the top it has opacity setting which means I can stamp really lightly or I could stamp very heavily okay anyway that's a cool little trick because it allows you to come in and you can throw in some little gradients and some little areas like that you can get some little details okay all right now that I have that done let's go back I'm gonna make a crack and I'm gonna put a crack in there okay and and of course I'm gonna want to do that on another layer all right so um, I'm gonna create another layer right here I'm gonna label this crack all right and there's one particular brush I have that I really like that has a natural gradient in it. Let me show you what it looks like when I go to draw with this. I'm going to go to more of a black, not quite pure black, but almost there. And let me show you what this brush does. It has a natural highlight in it. You see that? It, it has a natural gradient from dark to light. If I go down, it's noticeable, but sometimes not as noticeable. Okay. So let's go down here, and I want to see if I can get that to be there. That's on pure black right there. But you see how that mimics crack a little bit? I know I'm talking about crack. I, I feel like I'm Dave Chappelle right now going, get a crack, right, you know. <laughs> so one of my favorite stand-up comics, too. Hold on a minute. Let me go to last. I want to delete all this right here, okay? All right, so I'm going to come over here. This is on another layer, though, right? So I'm going to go back to brush, and I'm going to come in here. Remember, got touch sensitivity on here. If I go light, and then I'm going to hit down and go a little smaller. Now, that didn't work, right? I pressed down too much. But, you Command-Z. Barely touching. Pressing a little bit more. You see how that starts to look like a little bit of a crack because it has that little gradient in there? That's pretty cool. So let me see if I can come on here. Now, here I don't like it as much. It got a little too dark, right? This is on a separate layer, right, folks? Yes. That means I could add to it. I can erase from it. So if there's something here I didn't like, I can hit E, which is my eraser. I can go down to like 10%, and then I can start to erase some of this edge. I'll go up to like 30 See, and I could start to blend some of that in however I want it to get it to work. If that's too dark, I could erase a little bit like that. Okay, now I can go back in and what are some options I could do right now? I could replicate that crack. I could draw more cracks, right? I have like four different things I could do. I can select one particular crack and copy and paste it and put it on another area, right? So I just want to try to mimic these little patterns that are over there. So what I'm going to do is just take my brush and very lightly and then try to come in here and draw like I have little stone pieces in there. It's this brush, if you open up the pack I gave you, it's number 25 and it has a little gradient control on it. Okay. So here I'm just going to I'm going to try to think like nature would. Nature is unpredictable. It has little areas that go left to right. Now, I've been drawing at my brush at 100% right now, right? So what if I lower the percentage and I make it a little bit smaller? Okay, if I go down to 80, will that allow me to get some other light, faint detail in here? So I'm looking over here, let me move this over. I'm looking at my reference right here. I'm just trying to figure out, hey, how do I get some other stuff in here? Now, eventually, my brush, this is what I like to call like human error, where eventually my brush is always going to be giving me pretty much a similar size. And there's a natural error where I, as a human being, am going to continue to repeat 
the same pattern over and over because that's what humans do. In fact, not to go into a little tangency, but one of the things on how um, humans have really similar repetitive actions and behaviors. Like we do the same stroke when you learn how to draw, you might reproduce the same um, value area or shadow. So sometimes it's nice to have something that's accidental. This is what I mean by accidental. I can take what I have right there, right? It's on another layer. I can select all, copy, and paste it. And I just pasted it. Look at what I have. So now I could take part of this and I could rotate it into another pathway or a direction and go, hey, does that fit in there? Does that look my, you know, it's still the same thickness. What if I make it a little bit smaller and I scale it down? Oh, that looks sort of cool. Now I get another little area of detail in part of my piece right there. Okay, so let me make it a little bit larger, see if I can blend it over here somehow. I'm gonna, remember we talked about right clicking within that little box and I have other options like distort and skew. So you see how that right there? To me, that was sort of cool. That's what I call a happy accident. If I tried to do that, it might take me hours and hours to get to that point. By using Photoshop and just transforming it, moving it over, and getting it to line up a certain way, it works a little bit easier. Let me erase a little bit of that. Let me turn the layer on and off. I want to erase a little bit of, of this over here. So I'm going to come in with my eraser and see if I can blend some of that in a little bit. Remember, you also have your opacity layer. I can darken some of that a little. So anyway, I keep building some of this up, OK? Try to get the cracks in there. Let me just leave this in here. And then let me select a couple parts. So I'm going to move that together. I'm going to paste it again. See if I come over here. Let's transform. I'm going to flip it horizontally. Make it a little bit smaller. Squash it down a little bit. Maybe that's sort of cool. Like right in here. So I'm going to take my eraser. And I um, really like that wedge eraser. I'm going to erase some of this because I don't need all of that. Okay, I'm going to merge these all together. So there is my current collection of cracks. Erase some of that overspray, look at it. See if there's something else I want to add. Oops. There. Okay. All right. With that sort of done now, I need to get in there. There's some thick and thins. I need to also get some highlights out in there. There might be some little shadow areas. So I need to, I need to now build up those layers. Does that make sense? So what's cool with Photoshop is you look at what you have, look at what's missing, and then figure out how to get back in there and put it in, okay? One thing I'm noticing is that in part of my, some of my cracks in here, they fade off a little bit. I might be able to get some more structured areas. And I noticed, look at the, the areas of dark and light in my, my texture reference here. Do you see that? You see how it's really dark right here? And then it fades off. So I need to get some of that in there. And then I also have some pebbled highlights that, are, that aren't in there yet. So, you know, this is where I'm gonna come in, spend a little bit more time and start going in there. So what I'm going to do, let me pause recorder for a minute and I'm going to do a couple layer passes so this doesn't end up being a huge video and then I'll show you my layer passes and we'll get them to blend in. Okay, so we'll be right back. Quarter back on. So what I'm doing right now is I have another layer that's on here. Do you see it on and off here? And I'm going in and I'm defining up some of the cracked areas by putting a little bit more of a darker value in there. So I'm taking my brush very lightly. My brush right now is set at a 10% opacity. So by doing that allows me to come in here and just come along and brush a couple little areas and get some of these areas to pop out. See how this little corner I just did right here? Do you see how that feels like a realistic crack? Because it gets very dark in the middle and then it sort of fades off. So I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller, connect maybe up here, touch it a little bit more. So I know when I'm looking at real life cracks, there's lots of little gradients in there. So I might have a dark area and then it pinches off and goes to a light area. So this is where we have to really start 
becoming familiar with using some of our keys, our opacity keys on our brushes, and going back and forth between dark and light. So if I want to make that crack right there pop a little bit more, let me zoom in a little bit. I'm always sort of changing my brush size a little. Some of you will notice going back and forth between a large brush size and a small brush size is going to be key. And having your left hand on that opacity and adjusting getting some of those little shadows to come in. So this is that point, remember I just talked about how we build up a drawing? We're building this up, building up this painting right now. You know it's just a texture, we're starting from a base and I'm applying different areas of thickness very softly. Remember, your, your pencil, you have your digital pencil has a ton of softness to it. So I'm just, I can come in here and barely press on some areas. I'm literally just letting the weight of the pencil drag itself. I'm not even pressing down at all to get these little areas here, these little dark and light little pockets. After a little bit, uh, a little while of doing this, you start to pick up a little bit of a rhythm. Pulling the pencil up high, going down to different opacity settings. Okay, I do notice I have this area here. I need a couple, I have to come down here and I'm going to erase. I have a little bit of an overlap here. So I'm going to go down to like 10% and try to blend this area in. Right in there, I have a little area of overlap in there. Okay. And then let me come back up. I'm going back to the crack layer now where I'm adding these darks in here. Again, I'm making my brush smaller in some areas and I make it a little bit wider. And I'm not doing this, am I? Am I doing this right now? Uh, I walk by and I see students doing that. No, I'm not, I'm doing this. I'm going dark and then I go press on my keyboard and I go light and then I go up a little darker and then a little lighter and then I fade it down. I'm getting that thick and thin in there as much as I can to let it blend in, okay? There's a term for that called lost and found edges. Meaning that by having those little darks and lights with a brush, if I press, because what do we know right now? If I press down with a little bit more black, I define that crack, right? And I make it more, make it pop out. But then if I come back in here and thick, thicken up the brush and then let it get a little bit lighter, and then a little bit darker again. It starts to feel very realistic. And again, don't get you caught you get caught into this and you're not looking at your reference. Look at the reference. Look at the darks to light, the dark to light, these little cracks. 
there's like a little triangle or trapezoid of dark and then it breaks off again. So I need to make sure I have that little trapezoid in there like that and then it breaks off and then it gets a little trapezoid again and then it breaks off. So this is where that old expression, you're only as good as your reference comes in. You need to really pay attention to what it is you have. some of this. I don't know, let's go cracks there. Oops, I blended some of this in. That's all right. Yeah, and it takes a little bit of time. It's all right. Build it up. That looked horrible, by the way, that last line. Just trying to get it to sort of off a little bit. Okay, now let me get a little bit more here. What I'm going to do is I want to start using let Photoshop do some of the work, right? So let's let me turn the layer. I see the difference with the values make going over them dark a little bit more. I get that defined area like that. So I'm going to merge these all together. Okay. Label it as crack. So look at what I have now. Boom. I have them there. I can still use those, right? Yes, it's on a separate layer. I could come in here and go, hey, I really like the cracks I made right there. Copy paste. There they are. I can flip them like this. If I can fit them into an area that might work, maybe they need to be a little bit smaller. Maybe they need to, let me see. Usually I like to flip stuff around, squash it and stretch it and see if I can get it to work. Like in that corner, that feels pretty good. It makes that corner light up pretty nicely. Lots of little details in there. And then what I might do is come in with eraser on like 10% and I'm just going to start fading some of these in here a little bit more. In fact, what I might do is just drop the opacity down a little bit, blend some of that in a little. There it goes. Go to 100% erase. There, and it gave me that nice little pattern right there in the corner. That was cool. I didn't have to get in there and do that forever, did I? No. It saved me the time just by pasting it over. So that looks pretty good, okay? All right, so I still have paste in the memory. Let's transform this. 
What happens if I put it into warp? And I bend a couple up a little bit like this. So it looks a little different. Let me see if I can find a place where I could use that. Maybe about right there. <laughs> Make it a little bit smaller. There to there, let's say. Make it a little bit lighter. Okay, I'm gonna move it over. So it goes right off that stem right there. It fits in there. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to erase, go to about 10%. And I'm gonna fade in some of these lines very lightly here. Sort of coming back over it and get some of this to fade back in, okay? Like that. Now, let's say I want to get that little line and I want to continue it over to there. See that? Zoom in. I want this line right here to continue over to there. A couple ways I could do that. Remember, I showed you stamp. So if I go to stamp right now and I go to 100% and I put alt and I press down about right here, See, it shows me where it's going. You see that? So if I were to come over here, hit the pen a couple times, I just stamp part of that pattern over there. Okay? Another thing I could do, since it's on another layer, is I could just select part of this, copy and paste it, and then there's my paste. So then I bring my paste over. Now you'll notice whenever you copy and paste something, Photoshop always puts it back in at the full value set. So if it was on opacity, it might change a little. Does that make sense? So if, if it was on opacity and you were working at 80%, I copied and pasted it, altered it just a little bit. Okay, it comes back, puts it in its normal set. So what I'm going to do is move, merge all of these together. I'm going to label these cracks. Okay, so now I think I'm ready for what I would call my highlights. I have all these little sparkles of white on the other one, right? So you look at the other texture and you look at what you're missing and then you come back over and you try to put some other elements on there. So now one thing I haven't done is save. So I'm going to save my file real quick. Okay, there it is. So I'm going to come back onto my highs now and I'm going to grab color picker and I'm going to get that bright like gray that's right in there. It's right about there. Uh, a little bit more. There it is. It's close to white. Let's see if I can zoom in and grab another there it is. Yeah, it's about right there. Okay. And I'm going to come back in and I'm going to go take a couple brushes. I have a new layer here. I had all these different brushes. I don't know what these do yet. Let's see what they do. Remember, always try your brushes at 100%. That's a little too much, right? At 100%. But what if I put that down at about 50? If I did that, and what if I hit it at about 20? Ooh, and it starts to blend in a little bit, right? Doesn't that look like a little highlight right there on those rocks? So what happens if I come over and say, take my eraser. Let me see where the overspray is. Oh, look, it goes over the crack. Okay, cool. So I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to come to my eraser, put it at like 30%. And I'm going to erase a little bit of where those highlights are. Going over that edge right there. See that? Now I start to get... Now, it needs to be faded in a little bit. It's still a little bit of a strong punch, right? So two ways I could fade it in. One is I could go back to stamp. I hit S. I grab that part of the texture. I come over here. Now that's too bright, so I'm going to put my stamp at about 20. So it's going to grab about 20... It'll stamp that value, but about 20%. You can even put some of that and put it over here. Yeah. Any So anytime you're on a brush, I just hit, when I'm in the brush, I hit 5, it's a 50%. Oh, okay. I hit 0, it's at 100%. Okay. So now I have that. That looks pretty good. and But I still want to fade it in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just drop the layer down just a teeny bit like that. I always tend to tend to overpaint things a little bit too detailed. So by blending that layer, and you see how that sort of fits in there very nicely, sort of just perfect, right? I'm going to leave it where it's at, and I'm going to come over. Let's duplicate the layer. So it's right-click. I'm going to duplicate it. There it is. 
And now I'm going to take that and let's see if I can move it down here. Let me see if I can squash it somehow and get that in here. Let's see if I can get that area to blend up about right there. Transform. And let's go to warp. I want to bring that side of the texture down. That's just about perfect on that rock right there. See that? Gives me a little highlight. So then I could come over here and go to erase. I can lightly erase this just a little bit to fade it in there. And now I have another cool little blend. Now I'm noticing this is still, when I come back and look at it, that's still a little too thick for me. So what I'm going to do is I want to blend that in a little bit more. So I go to erase 100%. I'm just going to come over here and sort of touch around it and get that white highlight to blend a little bit more in there. Okay. Let's merge these together. So there's my highlights. See them? Okay. So blending that in. So now I could do that. I'm going to go through and apply those highlights to all those little cracks and crevices and take a look at my texture. Figure out if it's working the way I want it to work, right? And then if it's not, and I have even more highlights, I can come back and do another pass. Now looking at the rock, I could even, even do a little shadow area on that rock if I wanted to. Okay, I notice there's a little bit of red in there. So I could even take a little bit of like a red orange like this, okay? And I could come over, put that under, underneath the cracks like this, and I could come in, let's grab a different brush. And let's see what a couple of these brushes might do. I don't know what, what is that? Oh, that's a squared off one. Let's try it with this guy right here. Let's see what he does. If I make him a little bigger, So what that does, which is sort of cool, is it's putting a, a light amount of color onto that. See that? And the color helps it just bring it to life a little bit. So I'm going to go down to about 1%. It's going to come along in a couple little areas. And I'm just going to very soft. I'm actually going to go, some of you aren't aware of this, if I hit 0, 0,5, it puts the brush at 5%, which is really low. So now by doing it at 0, 0,5, I'm coming in, I'm smearing in just a very light amount of earth tone to that. See that happening? A little bit. Touching a couple areas. And see how that brings it alive just a little bit more? Okay. Now let's look at the layer. Can you see that difference that I just did there? Is it hard? Can you guys see that on the monitor? If I turn it, okay. So I did that there. What if... If I look at here, what other colors are in there? I notice I have, there's a couple of dark reds in there. There's a little bit of a, of a green right there. So I'm going to take that green maybe about there. I'm going to put another layer up here. I'm going to grab a different brush so it doesn't look the same. And I'll come back over and maybe go, hey, put a little bit of you in this corner. Make sure I'm at setting again like five but I'm already liking my my texture feel right there I think it's looking pretty cool so um, let me merge these together I'm going to call these some um, added a little bit of color on there so there's a color on and off. What's cool is you can even, if I just duplicate that layer, it'll keep it in the same place. Then I can decide that. Now that's too much color to see what happens. As it pops out, I can see part of the strokes. So but what happens if I were to take that, transform it, and rotate it over a little bit more? Maybe that might help out and blend in a little bit more. Okay. Um, I want to keep doing the highlights, though. The highlights are really giving me some nice effects. So a couple ways we can do highlights. One, we can stamp them. We can copy and paste them. We could repaint them, right? All these different options. I'm going to select, copy, and paste from that layer. I'm going to bring it back down over here. I'm going to transform. See where I can get those highlights to sort of fit in. I like that. I'm going to go to Eraser. 
Yeah, we'll get rid of some of that. Keep that little highlight on there. I like how that rock's looking up there. Race around this a little bit. Gets that area to pop a little. That's pretty cool, right? Leave that, boom, paste again. Take that, transform. Squash it down. Come back to eraser. Can you erase where that highlights were overlapping some of the cracks. Might drop it down, blend it a little bit in there. A little bit of light and dark. Okay. That's pretty good. Take those, we're gonna merge them together. It's on a separate layer, so I can still make little adjustments. Where I have to. Okay, so there I adjusted a little bit more and look at there are my highlights. So I can keep going with the highlights, keep adjusting them, but I'm going to stop right there. Okay, trying to limit myself it takes me a little bit when I'm talking, it's always harder. I lose my flow or my rhythm, right? I come back over and I look. What I like to do is put stuff away. So I might minimize that and go, hey, that's cool. That has that sort of stone feel to it and I could come back to it a little bit later and I could maybe mimic a couple other colors I can adjust the base color whatever it uh, whatever else you want to do actually it's sort of like that when I look at it small like that it has more of a realistic feel to it what I did there is I had that little color copy that I put on there so let me duplicate that natural flow of Dark to light patterns that stone might have. There, that's sort of cool having it over there. I'm going to duplicate that layer. Okay. Can move that up a little bit more up there. It's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to commit to it and then clean it up around there and say, hey, that's my stone texture. But you guys saw how I built it up, right? So if I come back here. Let's just take off the layers really quick. So if you look here, I'm going to go through it. If you didn't know you could do this, it's a pretty cool trick. If you hold down on one eye and then drag it all the way down, it takes off all the eyes. Okay. Let me show you how I did that again. If you have all the eyes on like this, okay, they're all my eyes. Okay, and if I want to look, if I want to take off a whole row, I just press one and then drag over all the others and it turns them all off. Okay, but now we can go back. Let's look at how we built that. So how, where do we start? There's our texture. There's our base, right? We walk through that and then we put a little bit of shadows on there. Okay, we put a little bit of texturing. Okay, we made the texturing a little bit smaller. Okay, at that same time, I put cracks on there to see how it would start looking. I copied and put some different swatches of color around there. And that's where I'm sort of leaving it right now. Now that's not quite 100% match to what I have there, right? I need more highlights. What I like to do is I get used to something. So I put it away and then I come back to it because my eyes get familiar to something. How many of you in here have ever sat down to do a drawing and you're doing a drawing and like you're three hours into it and you're like this, rendering the heck, and then all of a sudden someone calls you and you go answer the door, you come back and you go like, oh my God, look at the size of that hand. And the drawing's totally distorted and off because you spent all this time focused on it so close, you didn't get to see the full picture. Your eyes get used to the image. So you have to stop away. Look away and go to something else. So I'm looking at that right now and I'm like, cool, I'm going to take all that Okay, I have it all in one little folder right here. You see that? And then I put it away and I turn it off. There's my rock. And I leave it and I come back to it. Okay, so that's your rock demo. Okay, so the next thing that I would do is I would start, let's go back and take a look. If I was doing the brick wall, I would pick a base color to start with. Then what I would do is I would define the selections, which are the black shadows which are the part in between the bricks, right? 
I would define that, get that down. Then I would come back and then what's the next thing I notice about that texture? It's in different color bricks. So I start swabbing a couple of those bricks and, and, and just putting different colors. Look at the difference if I pull up the color picker, okay? This one is more of an orange. See that? This one has a little bit more yellow in it, okay? This one is a little bit more orange with red in it. See the difference? So right there I probably have, look at that, that one has a lot more red. This one has a lot more yellow. This one's a little bit more orange on that corner. I would be grabbing all those colors and then just copying and pasting them over and getting it to make it feel holistic, right? Okay. All right, stop the recorder right there.